Hello. Hello. How how is everybody? Did you make it through the eclipse? I don't know if all of us did, but I did. I thought we were supposed to I thought this was supposed to be the end. Like this is the 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 end of everything and we're just going to roll up the tent. So I didn't really plan too much tonight for tonight's show because I figured by now we would all be like shaking hands in the afterlife wherever you go when you're done with this dirt circus. If you go somewhere else, uh, I hope to see you there. Uh, but I don't even know. Because if you ever sit and think about forever, if you think about forever sleep or forever life, you get kind of woozy, don't you? I, I do. I get a little woozy. Like, oh, let's not think about that tonight. Let's just think about the next beer, right? Let's just not even think about forever <laughs> sleep or what happens on the other side of an eclipse, apocalypse. So hello. Good to see you all. I'm glad you're here. Mark, Mark, Mike, Jason, Kevin, Hans, Ray, Kevin again, just got my check versions of Seculina and Boys in the Valley from, from Nam. Oh my word, they're incredible. From Nam. Good evening, Brandon. Alexia. Alexia, I saw your message. Damn. Uh, interesting stuff. I just didn't reply yet. You sent me a message on Patreon, so... Um, yeah, wow. So we can talk about all these things tonight. Um, oh, and it's my son's birthday. Happy birthday, Kevin's son. So we ordered a solar eclipse for him in Austin. His name is Austin. It did not fail. Nice, nice. It's nice when you're, there's a city named after you, but I can't imagine what a Jeff city would be like. Jeff, (laughs) where are you going? I'm going to Jeff. No, really? It's, yeah, you got to? Can you avoid it? No. No, it's, I got to pick up some expired deli meats. Okay, well, yeah, that's what they got in Jeff. It's what they, it smells like armpits there. If you're going to Jeff. Um, Brandon, yes, Kevin. Johnny. Hello, Johnny, who I thought was Nathan. Tim's here. Hello, good evening. When's the eclipse? <laughs> It got real dark when I was in Costco today. But that happened outside. I was under the magical, comforting warehouse fluorescence. I have Manos. Andrew. Hello. Hello, chat. Jeff, my dog just ran up to my TV to stare at you up close. Well, he must smell the fear in me because we have a puppy. And that puppy has tenderized all of us. And we are now afraid of dogs. That dog, man. We have a... Poe is a... We talked about this. Grenendale. You know what? Let me open this. Hello, Duff Bucket. Let's pretend it's in the Duff Bucket. Hello, Duff Bucket. We got us a Medved. Is that a Medved? Medved. Wasn't that the vice president of uh, Russia? Medved? Wasn't it? He was like... He was like the president of Russia... When Vladimir Putin couldn't justify being president of Russia for a term or two. I don't know. He's like, hey, I'll step back. This guy will be here. And then his hand was completely up Medved's ass, making his lips move. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, he he was the president. And now it's Putin again. All right, so let's open this. This is one of them lager beers from Slovenia. It's a Slovenian, Slovenian beer. It's a lager beer. Drink a whiskey drink, drink a vodka drink. Drink a lager drink, drink a cider drink. Yeah. Yeah, Chub Tub Thumping by Chumba Wumba, right? Uh, piss the night away. That's what we're going to do. Whoa. Sorry, Hans. I know that's triggering for Hans to see. Uh, so hi- say hi to your dog, Andrew. Um Train them to bite. The only wor- the, the world only ends when no more books are published. Oh, man. You're not kidding. Although Evil Dead would have you believe it was the books that were ending the world. So, Evil Dead. Sam Raimi have something against literature? Number one's here. Queensryche, Jeff. City Woman. Oh, Queensryche. Jeff Tate. I guess Jeff Tate would be... There'd be a suburb of Jeff 
J E F F, and it'd be called Jeff, G E O F F. It'd be like the richer suburb, and it'd be right next to George, because I think G E O F F is the name people give their kids when they can't decide between George and Jeff. So they're like, we'll just, we'll kind of start at George, and we'll go, we'll give up, and we'll go to Jeff. I don't want to tell you what the two F's stand for. So, Jeff Tate, city woman. Oh, uh, Mitch is here, cute poor. No, oh, we're not all, you know, I don't have a kegerator sitting here with the tap, psh, you know, psh, donking it in. I got to work with what I have. This is pretty good. This is pretty good. It's better than those Polish beers, I tell you. The Polish beers I had, and I had them here, those European... Oh, ugh, garbage. This is this is actually pretty good. It's not a rapture. It's not a rapture. I know this ruins, um, this ruins Hans's heart. It hurts to see me poor. But this ruins Mitch's brand when... Is, is rapture brewing, like glowing for anybody else? The, the picture, man. I don't know. It looks like it's like, you know, if you've had too many and you're just, there's kind of a glare, a glow about it that I don't think Mitch intended. Like a starburst, if you were. Greetings. Stephen Wayne Nelson Jr. is here. Uh, Mitch is here. Yeah, I was waiting. I was just delaying. You know, I was trying to, trying to circle. You know, like when a plane can't land yet, you just circle. You know, you didn't get, air traffic didn't say you could bring it in. Until Mitch is at the gate, you know. Uh, very glowy. Yeah, you know, it looks like I have an astigmatism. Okay. I mean, that could be the effect I'm going for. This could be a disco ball type of thing. I sat and I, I tried to clean it. Oh, that's actually a little better. Oh, look what your thumb can do. <laughs> look what your thumb can do. <laughs> That'll be a great... Out of context... The Jeff word shirt, it'll say the Jeff word. Look what your thumb could do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, 90% of it is me amusing myself. So it, it, that's what we got to do for content these days. <laughs> uh, anyway. Yes, maybe it is glowing from the eclipse. Yes, it's glowing. I'm glad other people see it. I thought I was drunk. Yeah. I'm going to pull my shirt open and there's rapture brewing. I actually have this exact thing tattooed right underneath my shirt. So if I rip the shirt, you'll still see rapture brewing. Just in case, you know, Mitch paid the premium branding package, you know, for my marketing efforts. Uh, he put, he put the lot, a lot of money out there. Just like a big, it was a big bag with a dollar sign on it. Right on the table. Then I got the tattoo. Then I counted the money. Don't do not do that. Great interview with Francois. Thank you. I am glad I cracked myself up. Good evening, Lance. Yes. Oh, it was awesome. And I got to say, I'm trying to learn. Every time I do an interview, I learn a little bit about how to do an interview. And I learned that I don't do good interviews. Like, I just tried. When I went through that edit process, oh, my God. We talked for an hour and 10 minutes. And you could see that um, the interview is 47 minutes uploaded. I had to take out a lot. But like I said, I don't know if you saw it in my news. Oh, excuse me. In my newsletter, the Slovakia, Slovakian uh, brew is going gonna, is gonna to haunt my insides. It'll haunt your insides. <laughs> uh, I may do on Patreon extended or director cut of interviews because there's some stuff I'm like oh this is kind of interesting but it's kind of you know you want a little bit of discipline with your interviews you want to you want you want question answer you want something that's a little more more coherent than a free-flowing conversation is what I basically was having with Francois because he's such an easygoing guy such a great guy you just fall into conversation you're just like ah just John and so I had a I had to chop some stuff out but um just, I couldn't believe the thing that was surprising, most surprising to me was how recent 
he's come onto the scene. And I vaguely remember him posting fan art on Facebook. I didn't remember that. But when he was saying, yeah, I just started as a fan. It was a slow week at work. So I started just tossing fan art, fan art out there. And I'm like, wow, I remember that. And I remember, and I've seen other people do it. And there's a lot of really great talent out there um, that, that really, it's, it's amazing. The people that are working right now behind the scenes, they're not getting the exposure. Um, they're working on their craft. They're doing a great job. And then suddenly they're there and they just seem like they've always been there. But Francois really has not always been there. It's been like maybe 10 years, you know? And I, now I regret selling Widow's Point because that was one of the first things he's he's done. And he did that for Cemetery Dance. So if you recall last week, um, I mentioned how he was worried I was going to bash Richard Chismar. And if you've seen the interview, you'll see why he was concerned about it. And knowing he was worried about it when I watched it back, <laughs> he, does, he is, seems kind of hesitant to mention Cemetery Dance at first. I, like There's a moment, a very quick moment. And I'm glad he didn't hold back uh and he talked about his story and what it meant to him and how richard chismar played a pivotal role in in his career in his uh uh career as an artist who could support his family and make a livable wage you know make make a good income at it so kudos to richard chismar for doing that you know that's the thing. That's another reason why I get so upset because I think he's shitting all over his legacy. He he does great things like that, but then he erases so much. And I've heard from so many people about how the money is starting to come out from Cemetery Dance very slowly. People are getting paid very slowly. It's almost like you know how. When people live paycheck to paycheck and they're like, hey, 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 like, uh, hey, can you front me this money? I don't get paid till Friday. Well, that's the kind of that's the kind of uh, situation I'm hearing. Um, I guess from anonymous sources, if you want to call them that. So I guess I'm like mainstream media reporting. I don't have to have actual facts. I could just say anonymous sources are telling me that the money is slow trickling out. They got to get that the standout. They got to get the faith to come back in. They got to get the books out to get the faith to get the money. People have to believe in them again. And man, it's a shit show. I don't know. I don't know, man. So uh, I told Francois, there's no way I would ever, if somebody's like, this is my story and this is what happened. I, w- I just, that's their stage right in that moment. It's like my channel, but it's their stage. There you go. We're, we're here for your story, whatever the case is. Now, if I was doing hard hitting journalism, I would have Richard Chismar on. I would have Gabino Iglesias on and I would ask them hard questions. I would be like, what is your deal? Can you understand how this pisses people off? Gabino is, of course, tied to the Patrick McDonough lynching. And, uh, yeah, we, we might get to that. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe we'll get to it. Um, but I was thrilled to do that interview with Francois. And uh, I, I still don't feel that comfortable saying his last name. Vian Cole. Like, Cole. Like, you have, to, you have to access parts of your mouth that you didn't before. And that's another Jeff Ward t-shirt. It's amazing. Look what a thumb can do. And you have to access parts of your mouth you couldn't before. Those are t-shirt ideas. I'll put them up on Patreon. Get those credit cards out. And it, and I just started drinking. So it's like, that's just, it's early. It's very early. So, and uh, I, I will get to William Schaefer tonight. Because I'm annoyed by him. Um... I thought you were going to rant about Chismar during that interview. So did he. And I, like, you know, again, <laughs> when he said it, I don't know. Uh, so the other thing I'm trying to do with the interviews is have not speaker mode. I want gallery mode. I want, 
I want both me and the subject on the screen at the same time. So if you feel like you're in a room with us, you don't feel like you're at some sort of corporate presentation where it's toggling back and forth. And it, I don't, I don't know. There's just like if you look back at my um, interview with Keelan Patrick Burke, that's it was it was done broadcast live on Facebook, but we're both there all the time, I believe. And I like it that way. I want it that way. I want both both people up there. So because there's a lot of time I'm not into what he's saying. And and sometimes the camera comes to me when I'm not talking. I'm just like, yeah, you know, and it, it shouldn't come to me. It should stay on on the subject if that's the way we're going to go about it. But if we're both up there at the same time, then it's not distracting. You know, you get my, you know, sometimes when I was talking and it was on me, Francois was smiling and nodding and you couldn't see it. So it's more of a, of a natural experience. You feel like you're at a panel, at a, at a presentation or at an event instead of, instead of the other way around. So I don't, I, I would rather have it that way. Um, I want to know the dirt on the stand art. I know, me too. I asked Francois about that. And of course, he's a class act. And he's like, well, I'm not going to get into it. But Ned Dameron started the art for the stand. And I don't know what happened, but they said, hey, they had to call in Francois in off the bench to come take care of the art. And I think, of course, he's going to do a fantastic job. Uh, I bet you they wish they would have just started with him. But Ned, Ned Dameron, who did Dark Tower 2, the drawing of the three, which that whole, that whole, that title pisses me off. Dark Tower 2, the drawing of the three. I always think of it as Dark Tower 3. Cause, so anyway, Ned Dameron did the art for that. So he has Stephen King pedigree, right? You know, he has that background just like don mates did um desperation i believe yeah right he did desperation for grant and then he did the shining for cemetery dance so i like seeing the same artists in in circulation for for stephen king i like that so i don't really know what happened with ned but I heard, and I don't know, I probably read it in a comment and somebody could have been spitballing, but King wasn't happy with the art. That's what I heard. But it's hearsay. Uh, my stick figures are out of this world. <laughs> uh, you talked at the chiz without blowing up. Good control. Yes. It was tough, man. It wasn't easy. And he blocks me. I was going to cancel my stand at Pet Cemetery, but realized that would probably be a headache for me. Um, I think they are, I think Cemetery Dance is like very thin ice. And if more people, you know, just dip out and take their money out, they could be done. I don't know. I don't know where the stand is sitting, you know? The stand is sitting. I didn't even mean that. So I, I don't know what. Um, I don't know where they're at. And if if it's possible that... I, I could not imagine in any situation that Cemetery Dance just closes up, goes belly up, and none of the books get shipped. And that Richard Chismar is still trying to sell books that he's writing. Those two things cannot happen. If, if Cemetery Dance goes down and all these people... And I'm not just talking about customers. I'm talking about authors and artists are out money. Employees are out money. Uh, I can't see people still supporting Richard Chismar's books. There's just not enough meat there. There's not enough story. There's not enough good stuff uh, for, for, for people to forgive that sort of like, well, I don't know. He writes a hell of a book. Uh, I can't stop reading them. No, I don't think people are that addicted. So, I just can't. But who knows? I mean, 
it, it's very possible that it can happen. I just, I just see other publishers go under, and then they just slink away into anonymity. You know, they they're like gone. They're they're not active. They're not trying to be part of the book community, and because they can't, people are like sending them angry emails. Where's my book? Where's my money? And and there's just nothing there. Okay, so Dameron did Dark Tower 3. You're right, Phil Hale did. Yes, Phil Hale did Drawing of the Three. He did two editions. And I actually like the second printing of Dark Tower 2 with the updated Phil Hale artwork better than the original. Um I, I, so I'm, I'm glad I have that. I got it as part of a th the three book set of uh, Dark Tower 1, 2, and 3 in a slipcase from Grant. Dark Tower, uh, The Gunslinger is the third printing. Drawing of the Three is the second printing. And then Wastelands is the third printing. But you're right, or first printing. You're right, though. He did, uh, he did Dark Tower 3, uh, The Wastelands. Yes. And that's the one, that's the cover where the house is going to eat Jake Chambers. Phil, Phil Hell did Dark Tower too. Yeah, yes. Thank you guys. Thank you. I'd buy that shirt. <laughs> um, what did I miss? Uh, anyone else follow the indie brawl? Can't believe Tyler Jones and Chad Lutzky didn't make it. I didn't know that. I went over there and voted for both Heavy Oceans and whatever the Chad Lutzky title was. What was it? Was it the Bed Makers? I believe it was. Um, yeah, that, that's such bullshit. I'm scrolling through the, and I'm sorry. There are so many names I didn't recognize on those, on that author list. There's a lot of names I did recognize and I've never read. So, um, a lot of that is like super extreme horror stuff too. Like Judith Sonnet. If you've seen somebody wrote a post about, um, no one rides for, for free, absolute chaos by, Judith Sonnet and Otis Bateman. And they're like, this book, if you think you're a hardcore, um, if, if you think you're a hardcore extreme horror reader, this book will test you. It's built. It's written to just disgust. And I can't imagine what would be in there. Because I, I would think at some point you would read it and you'd just be like numb to it. Like, okay, well, because these are all words on a page, right? <laughs> uh, I, I Trust me, nobody, nobody thinks that, that. Nobody thinks that is as ridiculous a statement as I do. I, I think that's, there's no way in hell I think they're just words on a page. The power of the written word is, is, yeah, I bow down to it. That, that to me is the ultimate power, ultimate medium. So I don't dismiss words on a page at all. But at some point, if you know that they're just going for disgust and revulsion and they're negating or they're abandoning character development and plot, I don't know how deep that hook goes. But Mike, I'm sure you're going to try it. I, I'm sure you're going to try it. I have the sodded book on my Kindle. I didn't think the first one was that bad. Not sure about the second one yet, LOL. Well, that's what Judith said. The second, this, the sequel, No One Rides for Free, Absolute Chaos. Right? That's the name of it? I don't know if that's the full title. But it's a sequel with Otis Bateman. Is like, takes what the first one did and just goes... All in bonkers. Uh, yeah, I remember once I was in when I first got my computer in the early days, I stumbled upon this one story on the internet. This is like 96, maybe 97. And man, it scarred the hell out of me. And I don't know who wrote it. Um, 
it was just one of those things. It was like nutty. And I read it and I'm just like, just, and I, I don't remember the title. I don't remember the author. I just remember one passage. I'm not going to talk about what happened. I can't really probably. <laughs> um, and I'm sure that Judith Sonnet makes what I read look like, like nothing, but brutal stuff, man. And, you know, I know there's that thrill seeking daredevil element. Like, you know, I think people who read extreme horror are the same types of, uh, or it's the same mindset as those who like go skydiving and base jumping all the time. Like you just want to push your boundaries. You're just like looking for the most extreme experience. And, uh, I, there's, there's a place for it. Sure. I, I just don't know if I even care to go there. I think Philip Fricasse should write an extreme horror novel. <laughs> Philip Fricasse. Everybody should dip their toe in that water one time. Because it looks like these people are really making a killing. It, at least in books of horror. They're, they're making an impact. But then again, are you writing the story that the mob wants, or are you writing the story that's in your head? I don't know. The Indie Brawl. So awesome. I don't know if you're being sarcastic, Hans. I think Chish could get King to support him enough to get the stand out. I think so, too. I, I think that's... I think the stand will come out. And Pet Cemetery will come out. And then uh, I think... Chismar was trying to pull an Icarus or at least not pull an Icarus. I think he was trying to bring it back to earth and he, he got Kevin Lucia to run the trade paperback line and he just went buck wild. So I think that uh, was not the direction Chismar wanted to go. I think he's pumping the brakes a little bit. I can't, I can't imagine... Could you, would it be karma? Would it be cosmic justice if Chismar takes all that money he made from his advance from uh, Net Galley or uh, uh, Gallery, Gallery, not Net Galley, um, Gallery Books. If he takes all that money he got from his advance from Gallery Books and, and uses it to bail out Cemetery Dance, and then it's like, that's like where your energy should have gone so your money didn't have to this type of thing like you just put people in a decision making roles then you could write and then this business is running kind of with with good people at the helm that you can oversee but it's like hey i'm the owner and i you know if there's things i need to know then tell me but get the books out why not Instead of like, there's a bottleneck. We can't get a decision. Things are languishing. But of course, I don't know. Because I'm here in my little cave. My little cave. Jones would have won. Uh, yeah, it's a great bracket. Just bumped Jones and Lutsky. Didn't make it, but it's still going to be exciting. Um, oh, a foster home and flies. Why? That's old. I, I guess I just don't understand it. Um, a horrible book was Holly because of King's political statements made. I, you know what? I didn't read it. I hate Holly as a character, and I didn't think I could stay in that spot for very long. Um, and then when I heard it was all a big COVID fantasy, I just was like, oh, but the storyline sounded really interesting when you got to it. But a lot of people are like, there's just too much bullshit to wade through. And I don't know why somebody would do that, but I guess King can do that to his own work. He's got the platform. He's got the megaphone, you know, but yeah, I, I wasn't gonna, God, you, you just like. Get tell me a good story, you know. 
And I've heard and I've read all the comments on both sides of the issue as far as like, it's, it's relevant to the story. It was the time they were going through. But holy shit. The, the level that Holly and Holly's a, like a hypochondriac or a germaphobe. So of course she's going to be even more obsessed about it. But is that what a reader is going to want? Somebody who's fixated on COVID? And, and like this this whole elitist attitude about people who didn't get vaccinated and how they're like subhuman and don't deserve health. Like all that bullshit they said about the vaccine that turned out to be wrong. But when other people were just questioning, just asking simple questions, they were like tortured, vilified. That, that whole dynamic is like unacceptable to me. When you, when you shut down conversation and actually just vilify a whole group of people. Yeah. So I can see why you would pass on it. I personally, I was reading uh, Horror at Pleasant Brook. And he was obsessed. He was writing a lot about COVID. And his stuff actually, this was Kevin Lucia's book. His stuff was actually kind of relevant to the story. I mean, it, it wasn't kind of relevant. It, it made sense. These were teachers and they were talking about the impact on schools and it 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 was like at at first when i was reading i'm like oh this is just too soon this is probably going to be a really interesting book in 15 years if anybody wants to look back and see what it was like during that time okay that's cool and i could see the 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 sort of interest in that to look back over the years but there was so much else wrong with the book that I was just like, nah, I just, uh, no, it's a DNF. Big time. Big time. Um, so, yeah. I mean, some of this stuff is like stage setting. And then you move on. And then it's sort of the backdrop. You know, oh, this was the time it's going on. This is why people are wearing masks and acting this way. Um, but it becomes sort of stage dressing, you know? It's not the point of the story to talk about how bad it was. We all got it. Um, but yeah. Maybe a character has a lean, but the general narration do not. Okay. Wait, every time I hear that Stephen King's got political on one of his books, then I read the book and I don't see it. Well, it could be you totally agree with his politics. So it blends in for you. You know what I mean? I didn't read it. So I don't, I don't have a comment on it. But... Um, so I don't know. I don't know if that's the case, Hans. Uh, it's possible that you, of course, if you're like, yeah, I agree. And therefore it doesn't, it's not, it's not like petting the dog the wrong way. If you know what I mean, you're going with the flow. This is, this is my thinking. I align with this thinking and it's all cool. It will be awesome when everyone gets over King putting his politics in his books. He can put anything he wants in them, you know. You can probably just skip those chapters. I See, I'm somebody, I can't skip anything. If there's a reason for it to be there, I want to find that reason. And if there's no reason for it to be there, if it's skippable, then that's not a good author. And King does. King's a good author. <laughs> Look, I mean, he serves the story. He knows, but... If, if if people are feeling like they're being lectured instead of told a story, like we've all we've all been to school, right? Well, most of us, and we've all gotten those stories, those parables, those things that are there's a lesson in here. So we don't like that. You don't like it. It's like wrapping a pill around wrapping bacon around a pill and giving it to your dog. The dog will eat the bacon and spit out the pill. Like, don't feed me that shit. If, if you're, tr if you got an agenda buried in there or you're trying to shame me, I don't want it. Like that's, that's the problem with pushing something. But if it's the point, so like Margaret Atwood's brilliant handmaid's tale, that was her point. You couldn't say, ah, oh, God is political agenda. That's the whole point. She's talking about a tyrannical government based on um, uh, a radicalized religion. 
that infiltrates the government and takes over uh, the world. And and that's her whole point. It serves a story. And, uh, you know, but I guess if it's just, because it's just, and again, it's a little soon, right? We just went through it and there's like uh, arguments against, you know, everybody's feeling a certain way and, and nerves are frayed and, this is a book for one side of the argument and not the other. And then you're going to get reactions like that. Um, so anyway, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not going on about that. It didn't bother me at all. Um, the dead zone is probably his most political book, but that's the point. That's yes. 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 That's again, that's a great, Anyway, I bought Holly, but don't know when I'll read it. Read it? What I, I would, If I was going to read Holly, if I had Holly on my shelf and I was going to read it, I would wait until... I'd, I'd give it another couple of years. Because, I mean, even now, our short attention spans put shit behind us. Like, like if, I, if, I, if I go to a store and I see somebody wearing a mask, it's like, oh, it'll stand out to me now. Like, oh, okay, that person might be having health issues today. They're wearing a mask, whatever. Uh, <laughs> but it's 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 like two years ago, three years ago, when you saw somebody not wearing a mask, you are like, what? It's, it's just such a short amount of time. The last King book I read was Dr. Sleep. I have bought some since then. Just haven't gotten around to read them. Yeah, I haven't read The Institute, The Outsider. I didn't read The Outsider again because of Holly. I didn't read If It Bleeds because of Holly. <laughs> uh, I wasn't going to read Holly because of Holly. Uh, I didn't read Billy Summers. So. But I found the short story, The Rats in the Walls. A character had a cat named that. And it is one of those times people don't separate book from an author? Oh, I don't know. Now, just to be clear, I also think Holly is a terrible rehash of a racist trope that he has always used. She sucks. Wait a second. So, but Holly's white. Unless I misread her in Mr. Mercedes, right? She's white. I know a black actress played her in the HBO series. In, in the H HBO, The Outsider for HBO. Am I wrong? Have I just miscast her? Use of that word. What? Was so commonplace back then. Oh, it does not make a person any more racist than anyone else for that matter. Agree, Hans. Use of the N-word. Yeah. Wait. Um... Agatha Christie wrote a book called Ten Little, yeah, and later changed it to Ten Little Indians. Now it's called And Then There Were None, but does anyone blacklist her books? Wait, what were you talking about with the N-word? Where was that? Um, oh, oh, a character had named that, and it's one of those th times. What? It's a word that has more or less died in common speech since my grandfather's day. Yeah. Oh, autism is a substitute. King used autism as a substitute for race. Okay. Fairy tale was fun, but a political sentence slaps you in the face by taking you out of a cool world created by the great that King is. So it can. It, well, it, again, I think there, there are a number of things that can slap you out of the book, too. But yes, I agree. I think there was something like that in Duma Key. There was a line where he punched his Republican stepfather or father-in-law or he beat his beat a Republican up. <laughs> Just And it was so out of nowhere. I'm like, what did that have to do with anything? It was just sort of like a, a king fantasy. You could see him going, oh, yeah, punch that Republican. And I'm like, okay, well, I still love Duma Key. But that did strike me as odd. I'll have to read it again. Maybe it made total sense. But it was just weird. Um, and there was a Toby Keith slam. 
in that book too. But those things do stand out if you feel like, just like, how about this? There's a scene in 112263. It's not political, but it's a scene where the main character, I forgot his name. I think one of his names is Jake. I forgot, whatever. He goes and he finds, uh, he goes he goes back and he finds a 12-year-old girl dancing with a 12-year-old boy. And it's really a weird scene and it's it's just it's it's a weird scene it did not there's no point in a 40 something year old man looking at a 12 year old girl dancing and and thinking how beautiful she is it's just weird i'm sorry you can't god you can't spin it any way to me there's no way to spin it that makes that scene anything but Flippin' creepy. Just absolutely creepy. Look at her. She's dancing with another uh, kid. They're, they're getting ready for a dance contest. And this this 40-something-year-old man dances with this 12-year-old girl in the woods. Teaching her how to dance. And then he's just longingly looking at her. How beautiful and innocent she is. And and King, and I realized in 11-22-63, he also... Like a prepubescent boy fetishizes um, Sadie's character and she is beautiful because she's a virgin. And you realize King has this fixation on the purity of women. If you remember Nadine from The Stand, she was going to go and be with uh, uh, Flag and she had to be pure. There's a whole big thing about it. And then she tries find she finds ways to have a relationship with Harold, <laughs> but there's just fixation King has with that purity of women, and it comes through. And those are just two examples that come to mind, and it's just like kind of wrong. And it has nothing to do with politics, but you could tell it's a it's a thing that King likes, so it goes in the book. You could tell when the story is the story and when the author is working something in there because it's their sandbox and they like that thing, so they're going to put it in. That distracts me. So it doesn't matter if it's politics or something else. If it feels like it's sort of sandwiched in there or thumbtacked in there, it's just weird. I'm sorry. I don't know what anybody, any of you think. Um, but autism is a substitute... Stephen King also does that. He does that with the hydrocephalic babies in uh, Wolves of the Kala. He he does that with with children and and basically special powers in children and yeah he but I yeah I I don't know if autism is it, it is clumsy how he handles Holly and and people are of a mind that if you don't like Holly. You you hate autistic people, and I don't think that's true. If you hate Holly, you hate how uh, non neurodivergent I don't know how to say it uh, white man author feels about autistic people. If you want to get down to identity politics, that's how that comes out. It's not like an autistic person writing a book and then you don't like it because you don't jibe with that sort of. Uh, thinking but i mean yes authors have to put on costumes because it's all one it's coming from one mind and they all have to put on costumes so it's going to be their interpretation of what that demographic does thinks says acts and um that's how he pegged autism but yeah king's black characters are super problematic i didn't realize this would be the king bashing show i didn't mean for it to be but his, he's super problematic with black characters. She's still magical. Yes. Yes, she's still. Hi, Jeff. Happy Eclipse Day, Russell. Good to see you. Glad you made it through. Glad you made it through the eclipse. Yeah, My Girl was a messed up movie. My Girl, was it? Wait, I, I don't know if you're being serious or you're mocking me. There's some things that are just weird.
That scene was only there so King could reference it. Um, everyone knows. I'm 40% through Philip's collection. Man, there are some good ones in this one. The Wish and My Father's Ashes are my favorite so far. I don't even have my No One Is Safe. Uh, Steve at uh, Lethe was sending it. I got a shipping notice. I don't have it. It's a good way to piss me off. Don't send me my book. King and Chismar are friends, so it's only natural to rant about King too. It hurts me because, like, King raised me. You know, everybody else had football quarterback heroes, and I had King. You know, I had King, I had Lumley, I had Barker, I had Bradbury, McCammon. Those are my heroes. And, I, yes, I, I loved metal, and I would have... <laughs> Shockingly, you don't have posters in your room of uh, horror authors. So my room was loaded with Iron Maiden posters and Wasp. I love Wasp. Very underrated band. Uh, shame to say it, but some Motley Crue up there. Metallica. Well, Metallica, Megadeth, that was, that was, I started liking them beyond my poster era, if you know what I mean. Like, I was a little old for posters. With, uh, although now I'm back at that poster age, you see, I've come full circle. Now I enjoy a good poster and I'm, I'm going to do my wall over here real nice. Wasp. Yes. Wasp is awesome. I just got mine today from Lethe Jeff after a week plus of shipping notice notification. Okay, good. I have the ARC and Kindle version. I don't have the pre-order from Lethe yet. Oh, well, that makes me feel good. I'm sorry to feel good, but it's like when we share the misery, it feels good. I um, Early King was great, great. Oh, no doubt. And you know what? Like I said, well, I don't know if I said it, but King earned whatever he wants to do now. He's earned it. He's ascended. And it is up to readers to either accept it or reject it. And uh, it doesn't matter to him. He's, he's in an advanced age. He's got more money than he'll ever spend. <clears throat> and he's got adoration of millions of people. So he could double middle finger, <laughs> middle, middle finger everyone. That was really awful. But you know what I mean? He doesn't doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at this point. And I got to say, he's earned it. He's put in the work. He's a fantastic storyteller. And we can parse his failings all day like you can with any human being. You could say, this person failed here and here and here. Um, I just also think it's silly when he gets on a high horse because it's like, hey, why don't you slow down there, buddy? You're going to defend Idris Elba as a... Uh, uh, Roland Dischain and, and, and wag your finger at everybody who's not happy about a guy who looks nothing like Clint Eastwood playing a role based on Clint Eastwood. You're not, you, sh you don't belong in that high horse, Stevie. Write a good black character and then maybe you can, Joe Lansdale could wag his finger at people. He's written brilliant black characters. So shut up. Maybe take several seats, Stevie. You don't have that moral high ground. Double middle fingo. <laughs> uh, Stephen King can retire and everything would be fine. I'm glad he keeps writing and publishing. Yep. Mitch is here. Steals his candy. Jeff, would you be willing to send graphics of the Chismar ads for Patreon members? Yes. That's a great idea, Kevin. I could post them there as downloadables. What do you think of that, Producer Jill? Yes. And maybe more ads. Uh, there's a downloadable we're going to do that's going to be a fun thing for all all member levels. Um, I was happy to do that uh, early access for the Francois interview. And I think when I do interviews and uh, more eventful uh, videos, I'll do like early access for Patreon members. But there's such a tight, small crew of Patreon members. Uh, it's fun. It's fun to do it. I liked it. I can't do it with this next interview I'm doing. I'm interviewing somebody on Wednesday. It's going to be awesome. But I can't post the interview till later. So that's kind of out of my control. But maybe I'll do a director's cut 
that Patreon members will have of this interview depends on how it goes. And then you guys at the Patreon level get that little bit of extra stuff, that extra good, that extra good, good. Director's cut. King did retire. He's spending his retirement writing. <laughs> it's funny. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, do you want to rant? Should I rant? I know I, a, a rant was requested of me this week from uh, none other than Kevin. I might have to hold on. Hold, please. I got to access this. I got to do it live because I didn't do good show prep. And, uh, you know, boom. There we go. Okay. So Kevin requested, Jeff, can I make a rant request? Are you, request. I, it's the Slovakian beer. Are you following the Malazan thread in the fans of Subpress Group? Invites a conversation about product quality rights. Second, third press runs. I realize fantasy isn't typically your wheelhouse, but I think there's a broader topic here. For my part, I should have simply followed your preferred presses and stayed away from others. Don't ever do that. You go where your heart takes you. It's an emotional decision to collect. And I cannot tell you what's in your heart. It's probably a lot of cholesterol. But that's, I'm not a doctor either. Don't ever follow me for any advice. Ever. But, um, uh-oh, somebody, I'm sorry, I missed it. I, King used, King used to be my favorite, had to read everything now, I could care less, still have to, still have to have them on the shelf, though, drug using King was the best, oh, wow, yeah, that's an endorsement, kids, you want to be a great writer, fill your desk with cocaine, finish it, and then start banging away at a typewriter, they should adapt that 100 monkeys at 100 typewriters typing for 100 years. One, will, one of them will produce the complete works of Shakespeare, uh, which is just stupid bullshit. That, there's no way that's true. But what about 100 monkeys with a Hunter Biden amount of cocaine in their veins? You could shorten that from 100 years to 10 minutes. You'd have 100 dead monkeys because Hunter Biden levels of cocaine just can't be ingested by a monkey out of the blue. You got to work up to that shit. You got to have a dad in the Senate for 40 years taking kickbacks to get to a drug level that high. Anyway, um, we're going to rant about uh, subpress. But, uh-oh, got to close that. I don't know if you're seeing things. <laughs> there was a message there. I don't know. So, yeah, William Schaefer, here's the text of the newsletter I just sent. Popping in here ahead of the eclipse. Based upon reader feedback and internal discussion, we've decided to postpone the pre-order for Steven Erickson's Gardens of the Moon. I should be back in a week or three with a new date, including additional details. Enjoy the weekend and don't stare directly in the sun next week. Okay. See more. And then I click on that. P.S. I love this. This is such a slap. If you have constructive feedback, what the hell is that? You got people invested in this series and you're going to passive aggressive this shit? If you have constructive feedback, please send it to our web goblin, Gwenda. She's going to assemble a representative list of what folks have to say for me. Oh, King William is going to have his surf assemble constructive feedback. So he probably told her, weed through all the vitriol. And if somebody doesn't say something nicely, disregard the whole thing because they're not allowed to have goddamn feelings about this shit. Because from my understanding, it's a total train wreck. These people are worried about completing their sets and having matching... A, a, a series that looks, the volumes in the series look similar. I cannot stand it. And then it says, William Schaefer turned off commenting for this post. And this is after it amassed 62 comments. And I, w I was laughing because you invite conversation and then you're going to get comments like this, you know, Adam Co uh, Co Coahas, unless I've missed something. And then he goes into this paragraph and then you got, David Smith goes into this whole long thing. And 
<laughs> what is this? Eclipse fun. Oh, somebody's trying to like make nice. Eric Mann, he's a good guy. Bonk. He's trying to make nice and, and try to lighten the mood. And then, you know, you're going to get a lot of, for some reason, it's just saying top comments. And this has 22 replies. And it's a big, long discussion. And I noticed that William Schaefer didn't really wade into this. He didn't go in to answer too much. Because um, you're going to get like, okay, what you said was a few little things. And I don't even, I don't, I can't even wrap my head around this whole thing. Because it's crazy. Constructive feedback. Um, yeah, he shut off comments. You know, I sent an email like you requested, but I feel bad for Gwenda. Yeah, Gwenda. Uh, I asked a legit question. Yeah, you did. Uh, and I don't remember where it was. And I don't know why I'm not getting all of them. So I'm just going to go to all comments, right? Oh, it's top comments still. All comments. So... You're going through and you're you're getting, you know. Stevens Wayne Allison Jr., you were in here. You might have been on a different one. Uh refresh my memory. I don't remember what you said. But people are like, why they just want rights. So this is people won't pass. It's a massive free money printer for the secondary market. No, it's not. Another issue with giving existing people first shot at the reprint. Just note how many copies have been coming up over half over the last month for inflated prices, but cue the goon brigade shouting, but that's why they're collectible. I don't really I don't really follow it. I'm not really jumping on on this. Because it's a series I don't collect. I can't really follow all the titles that they're batting around here. They're talking about a lot of uh, a lot of different books. And essentially the printer messed it up. There were many issues. The first two books were printed with gilded edges, and now they're not going to have it. And they went into second printing to get around this issue, and now they're going into a third printing. And people that want a complete set that looks like each other, they're going to want all the third printings or all the second print. I don't know. But it's a cluster, big time. And um, I don't know what you guys think about it, but... When I see stuff like this, even if you don't want to unpack it all and get into the nitty gritty, and, and maybe if I did, I'd say, well, Bill Schaefer's just doing what he can. His tone is bullshit. He's condescending AF, and I don't think he's handled this well, but um, I don't know of a better way to handle it, except maybe work on that tone. If you get any constructive feedback, then don't ask if you can't be nice to your customers because this is a broad statement. He's not like responding to somebody who said something really awful and abusive and saying, you, you know, if you have constructive feedback, please email me again. Uh, but consider your tone before you do so. Otherwise I won't re you know, I won't listen to that. I won't be yelled at, you know, like that's different, but he's just, again, just like, what what is with these business owners who feel like it's okay to just like vilify your customer base with a passive aggressive slap? It's really annoying. A question from a novice collector: How many limited editions can be printed before it loses the limited aspect? Asking for a friend. Yeah, that's a great question, Stephen Dwayne Ellison Jr. If you're just constantly reprinting them, then they are not limited editions. And that's why I don't understand that comment about the secondary market values because it can't be going up when there's just an infinite amount of books being printed. They, they can't command that much money in the secondary if, if there's no end in sight. Um, click on where it says top comments and you can change it to all. Yeah, I did. So I'm just so glad I don't collect much sub press. I know it's not worth it to me. It's like shit like this. Like I'm already somebody who doesn't go to the secondary. The, the more hurdles you put up, the more problematic your press is, the less likely this. Cause again, like, like I said earlier, which is Mark, you need to get the faith restored 
before you get the, the money. Faith comes in first and then the money. Trust is another word. Faith sounds like a cult or religion. Trust. You have to earn the trust before you can earn the money. If you're a new press, people will give you benefit of the doubt. And, you know, they, there might be some that hold back like, yeah, I've seen this shit before. But then again, some people saw what happened with Centipede with Salem's Lot and Suntup with Misery. And they're like, man, maybe taking a chance isn't such a, such a gamble. These presses seem to uh, surprise more often than not. So you get a little grace if you're new. But if you've totally ruined your reputation, it's going to be so much harder to get that money to flow back in. Because you first got to get that trust back. And then it becomes a chicken and egg thing. How do you get that trust if nobody's buying books and you can't print the books or ship the books because you don't have the money coming in because you ruined the trust. But if you got the money coming in, then you can regain the trust by shipping the books. And then it just becomes a death spiral. And I think that's what Chiz is looking at. I don't know, though. I'm outside. You know, I'm outside. That was hilarious, though, Stephen. I liked it. What's irritating is that he only wants to do a third reprint for book one when book two had issues as well. Yes, Dead House, Dead House Gates. So he's fixing the issues for the first book in a series that won't match anything else necessarily, although they are doing away with the Gilded Pages. So there, there are a number of issues. They're going to have two books that are the first printings that are going to have these Gilded Pages. No other books in this series will have it. And somebody was like, fine, that's fine. Because the books on the shelf, the dust jacket, and the boards are going to be different. They're going from uh, embossed boards to just stamped. There's going to be like no bite to them, is my understanding. And then somebody's like, that's fine. The dust jacket's going to cover all of it. And then there's a border, a white border around the art that they want to do away with. But again, people are like... People are fanatic about matching numbers. And these are things that nobody's going to see. The books can be completely identical except for the number written in them. But the collector wants to know that when they open the book, they're all going to say 23 or whatever their number is. So that's, that's important. And what he's doing is saying, kiss my ass for what's important to you. Only give me constructive feedback. Sorry, it doesn't goddamn work that way. We don't serve you. You serve us or you don't be in business anymore. Like, holy shit, do you think you work for the government? Like, that's the thing I like about capitalism. These people are accountable. People are like, there's no accountability. Yeah, there is. Tremendous accountability. Immediate accountability. People don't buy and then those places go away. Can you not do business with the government? No, I'm sorry, you have to. So they could be as big asshats as they want. They could do whatever they want because they have the only monopoly allowed. But a business, you could just elect not to buy suppressed books. And then his attitude should change. He, he Customer service is paramount. That's why that phrase, uh, you know, I don't, I don't agree with it, but <laughs> the philosophy behind it serves businesses and that's the customer is always right even when they're wrong that's rule number two rule number one the customer is always right rule number two even when they're wrong see rule number one because you want to stay in business and you know there is a limit to it you 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 know you like for example you don't want to take a couch back that somebody had for like two years and give them a full refund you know, like that's something maybe wouldn't be good for business. But what I'm saying is he, he has an entitlement attitude that makes me not want to do business with subpress. You're not entitled to my business. And, you know, what am I missing? Uh, what am I missing? I'm missing a lot. A lot. Um, small presses need to please their buyers, not anger. <laughs> I know. Um, yes, it, it's like, yes. 
for sure. I think all businesses have to. This is how Bill is different to other press owners. He doesn't give give a hell, give an F, G A F. I I can't imagine someone like the Pauls or Jared speaking to their customers like no. And that's why Travis, when he shamed everybody for, and then did you see my newsletter? And I talked about it here, I believe. He lightened the girl's skin. What? That's like a graver sin. Whatever. You go read my newsletter if you want the uh, skinny on that. Oh my God. So this attitude, this entitlement attitude, this holier than thou attitude, you can pound it right up your ass. I don't, don't do that bullshit. Bring your constructive criticism. Oh, I got, you know, I mean, it's like, now you're, you know, you, yeah. um, I wasn't happy with the last three books of Subpress's Expanse series. The paper seems much lower quality. Yeah, that's a big deal. Yeah. Um, someone posed a rather, yeah. So Stephen Dwayne Allison Jr., you had a, personal interaction with Paul and I'm not I'm not saying anything about that uh that's your business and it is it is entirely thing but he didn't blast you to the world he didn't talk to his entire customer base in in broad strokes it was something that got personal between you two and he kept it there and you know, I'm I'm saying like you're you're legitimate for your feelings, and he's legitimate for his feelings, and that's between the two of you. Um, but it's different when you're talking to all the customers at that point. You know what I mean? It got to a point where it got personal, and I don't agree with how he handled it at all. I don't think he should have taken it that personally. Um, so in that in that sense I agree with you. I don't think he should have. I don't think I don't think a business owner should take it personal. You have to grow a skin and have some distance between uh, a comment about the product. Even when your heart is in it, even when you're when it's your passion and you poured your soul into it, you can't cuz now it is a business and it is a product. And you are going to have dissatisfied customers, no matter what. Nobody is 100% adored. Nobody. <clears throat> Collectors notice the smallest details. In oh my God, yes. Oh my God. I know every little blemish on any of the books I have on my shelves. And, and when you look at them, that's all you see. I'm telling you, it's like, it's hard. I hate that. Sometimes I'm like, yeah, this is just the natural process of things. A book dropped. Somebody, you know, it got it got uh, something on it. You know, it could be a trade edition. That's more acceptable, but definitely not the Sun Tops or the Centipedes or any of my higher end books. You, you lose your mind when bad things happen to those. But yeah, <clears throat> collectors will notice that. Um, it's like he's saying we can't commit to quality anymore, but we'll gladly take your money. Dude, that is, that is a good, uh, take on that. Someone posed a rather legitimate question. Why is it that Eastern press can do gilded without the same persistent issues? Right. How can cemetery dance not deliver a book when SST centipede earthling, Subpress, Suntop, Levidian, all these other presses can deliver a book. I can't fall asleep sometimes because I know that I have different numbers on my Dark Regions press Mallermans. Then I get pissed because they are a lie. I know. I hate that. You know what? I'm gonna say something. Um, I uh, I am kicking myself so hard that. I got, I did not request. My other Fricasse chat book is number five. And Philip was taking number requests and I didn't request five. And now I got 107. And my other uh, book here, I could have requested number five. That's my earthling number. My 
Thunderstorm number for Fricasse is 55. My Lavidia number for Fricasse is 555. Why didn't I ask Philip for fives? And if he's like, hey, Jeff, I can't do five, but I could do 55. Great. Why didn't I? And I hate myself. But it's no one's fault. It's not like I asked it and Philip sent me the wrong numbers. I just didn't ask. And when he was like in over his head trying to justify all these number requests, I didn't want to add to it. You know, I'm just like, I felt horrible for what he was going through. And, and so, but it is going to bother me. I'm going to be honest. And it's, and again, it's not Philip's fault, but this is going to be on the shelf. I'm like, I could have had all matching fives or 55 or whatever. At least my chat book could have been a five. And then I'd say my Fricasse chat book number is five. That was stupid. And yeah, it's going to bother me. It's going to bother me. <laughs> and that's all on me, you know? Wasn't this the same publisher that was rationalizing the expense of books a couple of months ago? Yeah. Just don't with this outfit. Yeah. Can we take a moment to huzzah producer Jill? Yes. She thanks you, Hans. She appreciates the huzzahs. Um, it's uh, That's becoming more common now. We as consumers can't talk about our concerns out loud, it seems. I know. I frankly give zero shits about Gilded or not, but the arrogance. Exactly. Like... There are times I feel so bad for publishers who try and try and like, look, I worked on it. I worked on it. I'm so sorry, guys. It's not coming through. I've sent this back. I'm trying. Like your heart breaks because they put their soul. Like that. I actually never got mad at Midworld when they talked about their quality issues and, and they were working through it. I'm like new press. He's working on it. He's so transparent. Kudos to that. And I, I empathize and I sympathize and I realize I don't despise. I rationalize. But when you come at me and call me a racist, you can kiss my entire white ass. Anyway. Um, seeing that Midworld info in your newsletter ticked me off. Ironically, I don't even get that. I didn't even get that Midworld email. Yeah. <laughs> it pisses me off. Was that our weekly schedule rent? Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. I got I got more venom. Um so let me see. Letters, not numbers, yeah. I have five, Jeff. Oh, good. Good, Kevin. I'm glad it's in a good home. I got number one. I'll bring it to Fricassi Fest. No, Kevin, Kevin. Oh. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. I should have realized I would put it out there and somebody's like, I got it. No, 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 no. Yeah, that is your number five. We could be we could be brothers. We could be in the family. We're we're fivers. We'll high five. How about that? I'll bring uh I'll bring uh Fate of Nero and we'll slap our fives together. <laughs> that sounds awful. But yeah. What the hell, Jeff? How are you forgetting your numbers? I know. I have 20 for all of them. Nice. He even asked us privately in our admin chat. You're an idiot. I know, I know I am, I know. I, and, and again, I when he asked us in our private chat, I was like, the guy's up to his eyeballs. He's dealing with so much. Um, I, I just couldn't do it to him. And I don't even really know if it crossed my mind at that time. But I just, I guess I, I see him as an author and not a publisher. And a publisher, I'm requesting numbers all day long, you know. I just didn't want to. So don't anybody hold that against Philip. He worked his ass off to get everybody numbers. He had conflicting, like somebody was asking for a number for the chat book, but not the screenplays. And he's trying to get them all in, in alignment. And so how do you add to that? Really? How do you add to that when the guy, when you're just like, dude, just write the books, man. I wish you didn't have to worry about this shit. Just write these Incredibly awesome books. 
I'll buy that 107 off you, Jeff. Now, since you now apparently... I don't... I cannot take number five from you, Kevin. I cannot. I cannot. My Hafner John the Balladeer books arrived, and you loved them. Yes. So, uh, Ron, you can buy. You can buy this at the altar store, Ron. You don't have to get my 107. Um, you can get this. You can buy it, and and the same with the um, screenplay. You can buy those. Um, Mitch, you can keep track of Jeff's numbers for him. He's apparently is incapable due to medical reasons and age-related reasons. You know, that's why I'm not running for president. Um, Unless, of course, you're trading it with Kevin. Well, there's no way I'm going to take Kevin's number five without giving him uh, uh, reciprocating. There's no way. There's no way. Um, I did get my copy of the hardcover chapbook of Find the Torch. Glad to have it. Great sig page. It is. Leather bound. Um, I did see there are people that were having issues with the quality of the book, but it's very collectible. It's very nice. You know? It, it will bother me, Kevin. Um, where are we at? We had... Uh, Stephen Wayne Allison Jr. started me with 56 at Alter, and Philip has kept me in the 56s since then. Yes. Um, I went to the Alter store and didn't see it. I'll check again. Okay. I'll keep a spreadsheet. Sorry, new keyboard. Still getting used to it. I hate new keyboards. Philip definitely will have them available in his Alter store and possibly the Freaks group as well. Jeff Rants are my favorite. What's next? I don't know. I don't know what else I got to be mad about. I have uh, Curious King written down here. Um, but that's not a rant. That's like love. You know, that's love. Honestly, let's just swap. No blood needed. Okay. It's bound a little tight. Kind of afraid to open it all the way. Yeah, that's... Yeah, that, that, a book shouldn't be like that, but sometimes... I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to say. Yes, we'll just I'll we'll swap then, Kevin. That's fine. I would I would be eternally grateful to swap to get these fives. Um totally willing to do that. Oh wait, Curious King is officially sold out. <gasps> no way, really? Um did I ha have it up? No, I didn't have it up. Wow, really? I'm I'm pulling it up now. So before they are hanged, before they are hanged, standard edition, it says pre-order. And then deluxe edition pre-order and then lettered pre-order so if i click on pre-order the standard oh i would i want that standard so bad oh wow wow congrats to anthony yeah wow that's a bad thing though he's got to fix it where his site um i can't return to the store whatever i'll just go back to this oh congrats to anthony you know, dude, he's another one that I was like really rooting for because he had issues with the art coming in very late on first uh, the the blade itself, and they came in really late, and he was super delayed, and he was honest about it, and wow, it sold out. Here, here's to you, Anthony. Anthony, that's how that's how I say it after my years as a teamster. Very cool. But yeah, that button should say sold out. It's such a tease to, to a hardcore fan. You know, you're there, you want that book real bad, and then you see it, and you have this glimmer of hope, then you click it, and that that really is a brick wall. It's like going 80 miles an hour into a brick wall. You know, you're hitting that accelerator. But congrats to him. Um, 
I was a little disappointed with my chat book. It gives me a Borderlands vibe. Yeah. I wish Thunderstorm would not use the same format for their hardcovers regardless of size. Not everything works at every size. Concur, Stephen Dwayne Allison Jr. 100%. Yes. Uh, I, I totally agree. That is... You know, I, I think they do... I think Thunderstorm, what I love about Thunderstorm is the authors they do um, and their art. They're, they do great art. There's not a lot of it. You know, it's like a, it's a dust jacket's almost always cool. Very cool. And uh, the end papers are cool. Um, and the signature sheets are always awesome. But a glued binding... Um, diminishes it and and some of those other things kind of kind of do take away but i love the press i love the publisher he's a great guy great authors he really does good things for chad lutsky and tyler jones and so i i love to to see that and i i want every and of course with uh this find the torch thing he's working with paul miller so um, it's, it's like when, when you collect a sun top book, you are going to be determined on the quality. You're going to, you're, you're going to be fixated on it. You're going to demand it. You're going to expect it. You're going to expect perfection. Um, with the, with the, with the design, with the materials used and with the binding, you're not going to accept anything. I sent back my exorcist numbered because there was a little something in the in the front board wasn't going to take it like wasn't wasn't there for it and paul switched it out no problem got a new exorcist um from another press i'd have been like okay yeah I mean, you don't hold it because of course the price too is like astronomical and you're like dude this better be perfect um and that's that's why uh people are miffed at Bill Schaefer for acting like that. You, you know, nobody owes you a goddamn thing. Don't act like that. So we demand it. If you're going to increase prices, you're going to increase quality. You're going to increase um, <coughs> quality control. Sorry, that comes. You want the big boy pants? You want to put on the daddy pants? Then do it. Then then or lower your price. Oh, it just gets me pissed. Um, I agree. Site is wag. He told me the new one is almost ready to go. Oh, great. Great. I can't wait to see what they do with the new Fracassi collection. Going to be sweet, I'm sure. Yeah, I got Behold the Void. Again, yeah, and Philip Fracassi. Uh, I forgot. Behold the Void and uh, Beneath the Pale Sky. Beautiful stuff. Love those two volumes. And, and yeah, but there, it does take away when everything's so formulaic, when you take that dust jacket off and it's the same square with the same title treatment. Um, it does, I gotta admit, it's kind of like, there's no like big joy of discovery. You know what I mean? I think part of part of like, for example, SST, you get their books and yes, it's going to be, they're going to be sort of. Uh, not standard, but the materials are pretty similar book to book. The colors are different, of course. Um, but you know what an SST book feels like. But what he does is a different title treatment. And that design is different on the board of the book. And it's fun. It's You like seeing it. You like seeing these little elements that are different from book to book. It feels special. Um, and I'm sure the cost... Is the same, but Paul at Thunderstorm is so deep into it, there's no way he could change it now. Like he can't change Black Voltage or or the, the way the, the books are treated. There's no no way in hell that would be a crime now because he's like all in on that. So both of those are still available, by the way. The Fracassis? Jones and Lutsky are both still there. Had the Lutsky already, the Ben Makers, and it's amazing. Really, let's let's take a visit th to Thunderstorm, Thunderstorm Books. Why not? 
Um, so there's heavy oceans. Oh my God, heavy oceans. Oh, I want that. Damn it. Mike, you're killing me, man. You're killing me. Uh, but I don't see the fricassees. Veiled is a pre-order. Heavy Oceans. Oh, is it still a pre-order? It didn't ship yet. Damn. So bed makers. Oh, my God. If, if, if I wasn't a moron and I had all kinds of money, boom, I would get three books right here. I get Veiled, Bed Makers, and Heavy Oceans right off the bat. And then I would consider Road of Bones. I don't, uh, I don't have any sort of, uh, maybe I'd consider I Died Too. I love the name of this, Pillow Face Rules, but um, it's that would be a total impulse buy. But yeah, definitely want Heavy Oceans and Bed Makers. Definitely want those two. But um, currently available. So where, uh, so let me see. Black Voltage. These hung out forever. They're, they're gone, right? Or are they still there? Another Lutzky that I should have gotten was Wormwood. Uh, my internet's acting up, man. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, th this is sold out. Okay. I'm glad to see that. Wormwood, uh, I, I slept on. My internet's a little slow. This is scaring me. It's sold out, yeah. That's the worst thing. You know, I'm actually terrified of uh, clicking on a title I want and seeing it there. I don't don't want to do that. I can't do that. Behold the void. Okay, so the Fakasis are sold out. <clears throat> um, I'd rather see a Fakasi Earthling than a Fakasi Thunderstorm. You pay more for less at Thunderstorm. Well, that's a hot take, Tim. Yeah, I, I hear what you're saying, and I do prefer Earthling over Thunderstorm. And <laughs> Stephen, you took the words right out. You're right. You're not right. See? <laughs> so Thunderstorm is doing a limited of Fricassi's new collection. No one is safe. So it'll match Beneath the Pale Sky and Behold the Void. Yes. Which my number is 55. And you bet your ass I'm going to be asking for 55 there. You're right. But I'm pretty sure Thunderstorm is going to do it. Did I read that somewhere? Yeah. SSD has a formula, but it works. Exactly what I was saying. They have a system and you kind of know what to expect, but it's different enough book to book to feel special, feel tailored to that book. You know what I mean? I really want Thunderstorms, but it's glued binding that kills it for me. Yeah. No, not the Fricassi, the Jones and the Lutzky. Yeah. Yeah, the, the Tremblay books finally sold out. Am I dreaming this? Did Fricassi post something about an Earthling version of one of his titles coming out later this year? Like in the last few days? Yes. Um, no, you didn't dream it. Uh, you're getting um, Serafina. I almost said Saculina. That's another uh, Fricassi title. Sorry, my nose is itchy. There's things I can't control. I'm a human being. Um, yeah. He has announced an Earthling title. Yeah, Serafina. The Jeff Strand Thunderstorm books tend to have a limited of 50 to 60 to 70. Yeah. It will be a first edition like all Earthling releases. Not all, but most. Because there are inspection from the modern... Um, Modern Classics line was not a new one. And I know there are others that are coming out. There are other Earthling titles in the works that will make you shit a brick. I don't know if that's healthy. It sounds like a cleanse. 
What are you doing? I'm doing the shit of brick cleanse. It's true, Jill. Um, thank you. I swear I just saw him. Yeah, Serafina. Dune and Hellbound Heart are other ones. Weave World's another. Th uh, as an example of Earthling not doing first editions all the time. Thunderstorm's tiny runs and glued bindings are why I don't have any. Yeah, they are tiny runs, but they're cool. And, and they do great authors. So I, I'm happy Thunderstorm is out there thundering on. <laughs> I'm happy they're doing their thing. And I'm happy for the authors that get these nice editions. So damn Hans putting SDAJ in a body bag. Earthling also did <laughs> inspection and on day of the pig. Hans, you're only allowed to fact check the host. It's not street rules. <laughs> But Jeffy doesn't understand my fact checks. By the time he sees it, his rant has moved on to something else. And he fails to comprehend. I know, that happens so often. And apologies. Again. I'm just a guy. Mitch, don't make me yell at your baby monitor and get your mom in here. <laughs> oh. Oh my God. Uh, if you didn't see it, Mitch... When I did my unboxing for, oh, this sweetness. Now, Tim, I didn't see your video, but I saw you hold it up. Were you able to get one of these PCs? I hope so. No, Tim probably got an actual number with no binding imperfections. Um, yeah, see how that, you know what? All right, I got to get out of here. So, see that? That's why it's a PC. But man, everything else about the book is beautiful. And, uh, uh, but it was funny because Peter Hunt was telling you, and this was really cool of Kelly, uh, Kelly Young to send it along. Um, Peter Hunt was telling you what a 45 was in the comments under my uh, Fricasse unboxing. He's like, Mitch, a, a 45 is an old uh, record, but he said it was printed on plastic. I would have said vinyl. So you you could use that against him, Mitch. But yeah, I was really happy he sent these. I'm going to read them. I'm going to read them too. Totally. I'm totally going to read them. Because I, I know I have a history of not getting to the books I'm supposed to be reading. And I got to say, um, I'm finishing up this book. I, I read three out of the four novellas and I'm working on the fourth one right now. Here's what I'll say about Keelan Patrick Burke. Keelan Patrick Burke is my favorite author when I'm reading Keelan Patrick Burke. I, I mean, I love what he writes. And then uh, and then it takes me forever to get back to him. And I like hate myself for it. Like, what took me so long? He is awesome. Just amazing. And again, he's like, I, I think he's on my list of authors you must collect. I have to update that if Tyler Jones isn't on there. He should be. But I have, uh, I think he's on there. Keelan Patrick Burke, Chad Lutsky, Philip Fricasse, Tyler Jones should be there, Robert McCammon, Josh Mallerman, Thomas Oldehuvelt, Sarah Pimborough. These are all authors that I want to get more attention because I just think they are phenomenally talented and and doing everything that I want. And and I, I, I just wish I would have back in the day discovered authors just like these authors when I was only reading King. I mean, there's so there's so much great talent out there. Talent out there. Uh they're RCs, Jeff G's. I know why are they RCs. What is RC? Um, please don't yell. <laughs> Love mine. Jeff, did your mysterious press with the McCabe? No, Ron, thank you for that heads up. No, I don't think it shipped yet. I don't think it did. Ron uh, pointed me to a sale. Uh, Mys mysterious press, mysterious books had a sale, a $150 book with a, a short story by Patrick McCabe. Never seen Patrick McCabe have a short story anywhere. For 40 bucks, $45. So it's like a third the price, less than a third. And 
a, a Patrick McCabe signature in a Patrick McCabe short story. Amazing. Yeah, and I bought the last one. Thank you, Ron. No, I did, it didn't ship yet. <clears throat> uh, Jeff, what's a vinyl? Is that a giant CD? It is, Andrew. It's like a big compact disc, only it's not shiny. And uh, you have to put a needle directly on it. Don't put a needle on your... And it has to be a special needle. It has to be a needle that loves the record. Can't just be like a Hunter Biden needle, you know? Like you can't just take a syringe and stick it into a CD and get music or a, a vinyl record. They're like baby size records, perfect for your tiny hands. The house on Abigail Lane is his best, in my opinion. I know you said that, and I'm like, I gotta read it. It's I have his short book collection. We live inside your eyes, and I read a few of the stories in there. They're awesome. The mannequin challenge was amazing. Uh, he's just such a brilliant writer. His brain, he's got this vibe. So like Chad Lutsky's vibe is laid back and the horror builds and it just shocks the living shit out of you. But he's laid back. He's grief stricken. It's mellow. There's a whole mood to it. Chad Lutsky writes in a way that nobody else I've ever read cat quite captures. Like... His book, How the Skin Sheds and Cannibal Creator, those are different Those are different animals. But if you read Skullface Boy of Foster Home and Flies, that uh, uh, Slow Burn on Riverside, those, those books have that, there's something just phenomenal, just trademark Lutsky. Just incredible, great stuff. And it's a mood. It is a mood. And, and, and Keelan Patrick Burke has that with his stuff. But there's this this isolation mood that I totally connect with. It's like you feel in society but isolated from it. Like you become very visible of how in your head you are as a human being. Are we ever not alone? Like are we ever truly in a group? You're always isolated in your own brain. And he's got that vibe. It's a, it's great. I totally, and 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 it's sort of a th thematic element to his work that uh, just I, so I got to read the House and Abigail Link because because you keep talking about it. oh RC is read reading copy oh reader copy okay all right I thought RC stood for Richard Chizzy Chiz dinner bells ringing Ron okay uh, Ron did you get anything you ordered that day. Because I, I'm now going to be worried that if it didn't ship. So, but whatever. Hey, Valentine is here. Valen Valentine? I'm sorry if I'm butchering that. My eyes are bad. Welcome. Good to see you. Hot take. Jeff infuses just as much political discourse in his lives as King does his books. And they both can because it's their show. Good point. Yes. Yes, but I... Yes. I'm going to try to say something here. Um, let me just say that if Jenna Bush acted like uh, uh, Hunter Biden did and got a pass from the media like Hunter Biden did, you bet your ass I'd be on it. So it's not really political. It's my, uh, it's my anger at this elite tier of justice this elitism that they could do whatever the fuck they want. That's what gets me. Uh, Producer Jill's going to do the Sandman thing and get a cane and drag me off the set now. So, but that's, that's what gets me. It's not about politics. It's about this, this, that's, that's why I make Hunter Biden cracks. Cause it's just like, oh wow, this guy could just do whatever he wants and we're just going to be okay with it. Like there's, <clears throat> <clears throat> sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, 
But you're right. You're right. And I think that if, if somebody has a political point of view, sure. And you have a platform and then it is your choice whether you want to, <laughs> as I watch my numbers, plummet. I, I know. Time to hit the road. Enjoy the week all. Take it easy, Mark. Who's Jenna Bush? <laughs> George Bush's daughter. Bruce is on a butterfly is incredible. His best. I got to read that. I got to read it. All right. Well, since I pissed everybody off with the F-bomb late in the game, uh, I'm going to have to... I just Googled Jenna Bush. Oh, no. She was a party animal, uh, from my understanding. But, like, you know, wasn't shaking down Russian hookers. You know what I'm seeing? And beating them. Like, that's kind of fun. Didn't have a laptop full of crime. Um, so, you know... Her father did invade another country for oil, so there's that. And his dad was a CIA. I mean, we could go down the rabbit hole of how awful both parties are, so it's really not political. It's this when you make your your elected officials are your become your rulers, we have a problem. They think leaders means rulers. No. You're an elected official. You work at the you work at the pleasure of the taxpayers. You don't rule the taxpayers. Now you got my anger. Now see, that's the that's the magma core where the real rant lives. I come here to escape that. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Yes. Okay. Jenna Jameson's? No, no. Oh, okay, Hans. See, now. Okay. No. No, now, now, see, now that's the real rabbit hole. That's a real pit opened up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bow out. I really gotta go. I'm at uh, ten eleven, so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. I forgot. I'm not in a soundproof studio. You know what I mean? And the beer, what? I, I could blame it on the beer, but it wasn't even one whole beer. So we're just gonna, we're just gonna ease on down the road, and uh, I'll see you guys next week. And, uh, uh, I like Jameson. Everybody likes Jameson. Y'all are a bad influence. So you guys are now, um, how about this for a rabbit hole? Hammer Maniacs. I'm going to leave you with that. Hammer Maniacs. So just go, go and pursue Hammer Maniacs and see what you see. There is, there is one video I saw of the Hammer Maniacs that is worse than anything Judith Sonic could write. I guarantee. No, no, Hammer Maniacs. Not Hammer Films, Hammer Maniacs. Good night, see you next week. Hammer Maniacs. You will be horrified. So good night. I'm going to I'm going to end this show. <laughs> oh. And uh, I will be back next week. Whether or not there's just like three people here or maybe four. Um, but you you got to see what I'm saying about the issue. That's all. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say goodnight and I'll see you next week for whoever shows up. Until then, be horrified. <laughs>